Hey you guys, uh, welcome, Mr. Smith's Kitchen. I'm Brian, or Mr. Smith. Uh, if you're new to my channel, glad to see you. Uh, if you're coming back for more, not only am I ecstatic, but I'm also very glad to see you. Uh, brief overview, like I do in all my videos. Uh, I do three videos a week, or at least try my best to do three videos a week, but I do have a family and a full-time job. Um, but we try to do Tuesdays, just sit down at the kitchen table and talk, hence Mr. Smith's Kitchen. Wednesdays, uh, I cook dinner religiously, and we always try, almost always try to do something new, or sometimes I share um, one of a classic recipe that we've had for years, whether it be something from my mom or Chris's mom. Chris is my wife, in case you're new to the channel. Um, but we, we, we cook dinner, and then on Thursdays, which this go around, you're not gonna see this until Friday. Um, what we're making has to take it takes 12 to 14 hours in the fridge after you make it. Uh, before I forget, uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, notification bell. Uh, and if you'd like, give this a big thumbs up. And that being said, uh, now we get the formalities out of the way. Uh, today, uh, we're going to do a dessert, um, as, as always. Only this time we're going to do a custard called flan. Uh, we got our recipe, recipe, recipe from... Uh, <laughs> that was special. Um, from fellow YouTubers, uh, Steph and Cloud. Uh, they have views from the road. They're sisters. They cook a lot of Mexican-style foods, um, and their channel is amazing. If you get a chance, check them out. I mean, hands down. Great food. We make a lot of their recipes. I basically have three main foodie recipe uh, re channels I follow. Um, views is one of them. Uh, and then I have Ken Rollins, who does a lot of Southwestern cooking. Um, uh, he does a lot of cast iron Southwestern cooking. He does a lot of cooking outdoors. Um, but he also, his recipes, he'll show you how to do them indoors also, or tell you how to do them on his website. Um, and then I've got Joya Baking with uh, Stephanie Jaworski, who can bake anything. And every recipe I've done of hers has been amazing. So, like I said, tonight we're going to do flan. What is flan? Well, flan is quite simply a... Uh, a custard done in a cake pan, and you, uh, you, you say it has a uh, like a caramelized sugar top to it that we're gonna make, and then you have the custard below it and it's done in a cake pan. Um, it does take uh, it doesn't take long to make, but it takes about an hour in the oven in a water bath. Don't freak out on the water bath thing. Um, it's not hard. It, it's it's no different than making a cheesecake. So. It's easy, but the first thing we're going to do is go over the ingredients list, um, which in and of itself is, is so simple. All right, but first, I need to show you why I was busy um, before dinner. I got bored, and this is what boredom brings. Boredom brings a blackberry pie. Um, I'm pretty sure I have a video on this. If I don't, you'd like to see it. Let me know down in the comments below. Um, as always, love to hear comments. You know, don't get many of them, but I like to hear them, you know, all the same. So... Ingredients list. Well, let's start with tools. Tools you will need. Um, highly recommend you have. First thing you're going to need, I know you're saying to yourself, Brian, that is not a cast iron pan. And you're right. Um, like the uh, saucepans I had last week uh, that were made of glass, this is part of that corningware collection that was given to me, and I'm glad it was given to me. Because the, car the sugar that we're going to caramelize, you can't do in cast iron. Um, you just can't. Uh, it, it will it could run the risk of just tearing up your cast iron it'd be a hassle to clean and you you don't need that much heat so luckily i got these radical glass saucepans with a non-stick liner now with non-stick don't use metal in them you don't want to tear that teflon up you want to keep it not high heat you want to use plastic you know or rubber it, all the same so you will definitely need something in the teflon room for those of you that don't have uh, cast iron, this is perfect. Next thing you will need <clears throat> is a blender or something to blend with. Um, and you could use a food processor. I mean, I suppose you could even use a whisk if you don't mind whisking, but the, the custard we want to get super smooth. So in order to get that super smooth, we're going to use our Ninja 1000, um, which is just a badass blender, hands down, for, excuse my language. Uh, for you youngins that may be watching. Now, that end, you will need, last thing, nine inch pie pan. Um, 
very important. And if you have, have it, use a deeper pie pan or cake pan. This is a nine inch deep cake pan, uh, nine inches round and about three inches deep. Reason for that, we're gonna set this down in a water bath. And the water bath isn't real deep, but the higher your pan can be, the less chances of the water boiling over into the custard. So, now, that's the tools you will need, other than your standard uh, spat, rubber spatula, which is kind of important. Ingredients list is as follows. You will need three quarter of a cup to a cup of, this isn't a very precise recipe, but you'll need three quarters of a cup to a cup of brown sugar. And what we're going to do, and we'll show you, is we're going to take it over to the stove top. And this is what we're going to caramelize. We're going to turn this into a liquid. And then, other than that, here's really the ingredients list. And this all goes in the blender to make your custard. You will need one 12 ounce can of evaporated milk, your choice milk, whatever you like, whatever your family likes, whatever you bake with on a regular basis. One can, 12 ounce, or 14 ounces of condensed milk. Once again, your choice of flavors. Yeah, you will need five eggs, which I don't know if you can see this, so we'll bring the camera down a little bit so you can. Right there, five eggs. Now this is important, room temperature. Yeah, that, that is, in baking, that is almost the one standard across the board. And then the last ingredient you will need, I know you're like, Brian, you just got started with the ingredient list. I know, and I'm down to the last thing already. That's how easy this is. And it just takes a little bit of time and some patience, and you'll see as we go along, it is two tablespoons of vanilla. Now that is two liberal tablespoons of vanilla because we like vanilla. Um, and that's it, that's our ingredients list. Um, as far as, you know, how, is this hard to do? I don't think it is. Now I've never made a flan, Chris has made it a couple times. It does mean you have to pay attention though on some steps. When we go to do this sugar um, and, and heat it up, melt it and turn it into a liquid, you, you want to keep your your uh, stove top on a, a lower setting, no higher than medium, and you want to take your time with it because if you're not careful, it can splash. And hot melted sugar it, it is not a fun experience at all. Um, if you do not have a uh, uh, sure. A stick, a stick resistant uh, pan, I, I would recommend throwing a little butter in there. Um, when we flip that, when we, when we turn, because we're going to have to turn this over to get the custard out, um, the bottom should still be hot enough that everything should come out. But just in case, maybe a little spray of uh, vegetable oil, non-stick pan. That's the words I was looking for. All right, well, I'm going to get set up over at the stove so we can uh, get to work and... Uh, I'll, and we'll have Chris start uh, doing this sugar up. All right, I'll see you here in just one moment. All right, guys, so we're back. We're at the stove. Uh, Chris, world, world, Chris, say hi. hi. So what she's doing right now is we're putting the sugar in the pan. Now we have the oven set on medium, okay? Not medium high, not medium low, about medium. And if you need to, for your comfort level, keep it turned down. Because what we're going to do is, and you'll see, we're going to start melting this sugar. Once it starts to turn to a liquid, please do not stick your fingers in the sugar. It, you're going to be tempted. I get it. Don't put it in your mouth. Don't lick the spatula. Don't do all the things that you've seen me do a dozen times while I'm baking cakes. That It's going to be so hot it will scald you. Um, and I don't want to see that happen to anybody. So all we're going to do is she's going to say that you want to keep a nice even layer on, the, on your pan. And you want to, you know... Just give it a stir. It's gonna. It, it, this process here is gonna take probably about ten minutes, you know, because you don't want to rush it. it. If it takes twenty minutes, that's okay. Um, if you have kids that live in your house, don't let them go running by the stove while you're doing this. You know, it's not. It is. It's dangerous, but it's not dangerous. Sugar is one of the worst burns you can get. Yeah, I, I don't know if you heard her, but sugar is one of the worst burns you can get because it doesn't come off your skin right away. Um, it's not like grease where it splatters and immediately cools. Sugar sticks and it stays hot. So you don't want, you don't want that to happen. All right, well, let's give it a second and when, I'll bring you back when uh, we get the caramelization going on the, on the stove or on the sugar, all right? Okay, so we're back. I know you missed us. You know, I missed you at any rate. It seems like it's been a lifetime. 
But that's what our sugar is starting to look like now that it's starting to melt down. So you have a couple of, you have options here, you know, um, and I don't know if you can see it or not, but right above the spatula, it's starting to starting to smoke a little, which is okay. That's that's not a horrible thing. Plus, it's sticking to the pan a little bit. Yeah, but that just means turn your heat down. That's all you're looking to do is turn your heat down a little bit. Now, see the color we're at right now. If that's a color you like, you know, you can keep that color, or you can you can make it darker. Um, well, you're just by cooking it longer, and what that does is it gives it kind of a a, a, a smokier taste to it like or burnt like um, some people like that in our case we don't so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get that sugar melted and then we'll move on to the next step but I want you to see that's about the color we're looking for right there you know you just want to make sure all your sugar is melted now when we come back we'll move to the next step which is going to be to put it in the pan all right we'll see you here in just one millisecond all right all right so our our sugar is melted. Now she's just going to pour it straight into the pan. Sorry if that looks really digital. It looks digital here at the at least on my end. So you want to get as much of that as you can out of the pan. I mean, it may not. You may not be able to get all of it if you saw. I don't know if you noticed, but we had a little bit stick to the pan. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of that is hey, the non-stick we're using. This non-stick is probably about seventy years old. So it, yeah, well, not 70. It was made in the 70s. So it's about 50 years old. Be careful, yeah. the bottom of the pan will be very yeah. hot. And, and once again, just for uh, safety reasons, you don't want to lick the spatula or, um, or stick your fingers in it if at all possible. It, it's blazing hot and it can cause you a lot of pain and anguish um, doing that. And then after we're done with this step here, We'll, we'll set it aside and then we're going to move on to making the custard. That, that's literally all there is to it. All right. Well, let me get my camera set back up and uh, we'll move on to the next step. All right, guys. So we got that done. All we did was just after we got done with uh, putting the melted sugar in the pan, we set it off to the side. Thank you for moving my drink and we set it off to the side now we're going to make the custard filling it's really easy i did forget an ingredients on the ingredients list and she's about to pour it in right now and that is two cups of heavy cream interesting side note i learned that the pyrex measuring cups are the most accurate and the best of the measuring cup genre in glass uh followed by the oxos for a uh, plastic learned that today pretty cool stuff huh all right, now, you'll, you'll probably hear the caramelized sugar uh, crackling in the background on occasion because it's, it's cooling off, and as it cools off, it's going to crack like glass. Next thing she's putting in is going to be the evaporated milk. I had a mishap with the can of evaporated milk while opening it, and the, I had to end up putting it in a different can. But once again, it's just the one 12-ounce can of evaporated milk, two cups of the heavy cream, one 14-ounce can of the... Uh, condensed milk the sweet milk which that stuff's amazing uh, if you've never tried it before i recommend sticking your little pinky finger in it and giving it a taste it tastes like candy it's fabulous that was the cracking i don't know if you heard it but um it, it's awesome stuff and then after she gets that done she'll go ahead and put in the eggs and then the vanilla. Now on the views, um, the channel that I got this recipe off of with uh, Stephanie, Stephanie and Claude, Steph and Claude, um, they, they recommend some specific, uh, they used carnations. The uh, huh? The vanilla went in right now. Yep. Um, they, they recommended uh, like carnations, evaporated milk, and there was a Mexican brand of uh, the uh, condensed, uh, the sweet milk. But use whatever you can find available, it'll work all the same. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to blend this. Um, if you don't have a high power blender, it may take a long, little longer, but we're going to want to get this as smooth as possible. 
So it, I, we're going to blend it for a couple minutes, you know, a minute or two. So let us get that blended because as you know from previous videos, the blend, our blender is kind of loud. And uh, when we get back, we'll uh, look at what to do next. All right, see you here in just one minute. All right, we're back. We mixed it for a couple minutes, about a minute and a half. So now the next step in this, and this is just to try to get the air bubbles, some of the air bubbles out of it and any lumps that might be in it. If you don't have a high powered blender or a way to whisk it up real good, you may have some lumps. But this helps get the air bubbles out of it. You got, you should have a, you can use a cheesecloth also inside your strainer, but we don't own a cheesecloth. And I probably will never own one that I'm aware of. So we're gonna pour it through the strainer and this way we can we can ensure it doesn't have the air bubbles in it and it helps keep it smooth. You know, you're when you're making this custard, you're trying to get the creamiest custard possible out of it. Yeah, that does look really good. I don't know what y'all think. I don't even know how well you're gonna be able to well from here it looks like you can see it okay. But that is some creamy, smooth custard. You know, I, and it should be. Realistically, your worst fear is going to be, you know, air is having a lot of air bubbles in it. Just let it set for a minute. Yeah. Let it set for a yep. All right, well, we're going to let that sit for a second, or well, a minute. Um, and then when we come back, we'll go ahead, we'll get it in the pan, and we'll move on to putting it in the oven because that's going to be a new experience we're not just going to stick it in the oven on its own like a normal cake all right see you here in a second okay so we let that sit for a few minutes and in the process my camera died but that being said we're back now one thing i did forget to mention <clears throat> is you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees you can probably start doing that after you have uh, liquefied your sugar so, which, uh, if should, you want to hold that up so they can see it because it's pretty cool looking. That is what the sugar looks like once you've liquefied it, poured it in, it just turns solid. It cools down, it turns solid again. And it gets, it cracks, which is, you, like I said, you may have heard it earlier, but it's really cool. So, she's going to go ahead and pour that in the, in the pie pan, or the cake pan. Guys hear it cracking? That's so cool. Now, depending on what size pie pan you have available to you, it may not um, take the whole, it, it may not hold all the custard, which is okay. You can always make two, if that's the case. Because this one's going to be close. Alright, so what we'll probably end up doing is uh, saving the rest of that. We'll put it in a Tupperware container, maybe stick it in the fridge. Alright, so she's got that together. I am going to swing the camera over to the stove because we're going to talk about some stuff in the stove. Alright, so there's the stove. It's gorgeous, I know. But if you look at that pan right there, that is it. we're going to do a water bath with this. And what we're doing is we're taking that, that pan, if you, ha you have to have a pan big enough to put this in, we filled it with about an inch and a half worth of water, inch to no more than two inches at most, depending on how deep your pan is. And you're gonna set your, your cake pan right inside of it. And what, this is the same way you make a cheesecake. New York style. Um, yeah, New York style cheesecake. Um, so that way it, it doesn't burn the sides, I believe is the reason why you water bath. Honey, there's another mitt right there beside it. But so we're gonna we're gonna take that and we're gonna set it in there. Now, as far as time goes to cook this, you're look, gonna look at 50 to 60 minutes. So 50 minutes to an hour um, of cooking, and um, you want to start checking it. What you're gonna be looking for, you know, like with a normal cake, you're you're gonna stick a toothpick in it. You're gonna look for brownness and sponginess. This one, did you see how it was wiggling and you know, kind of all over the place while she was putting it in there? It's still wiggling a little bit now, like water, it's liquid. You're gonna look for a firm jiggle, is, is what you're gonna look for. When you when you grab it, it should act like jello. It should wiggle a little bit, but not a whole lot. 
The last thing she's going to do is put this piece of foil over it. She's going to tent it so it doesn't doesn't completely touch the top. And what this does, you don't want your custard to burn. You know, and your custard could burn. Even though when we when we eventually take it out of the pan in the morning, it, it we're going to flip it upside down like the pineapple upside down cake we made. So we've got our oven preheated at 350, and we're going to start at 50 minutes, and then at 50 minutes we'll pull it out, we'll jiggle it a little and see how it looks, and if need be, we'll put it in there for that additional 10 minutes. You, you will know your oven, you know, better than I know your oven, and like I've said before, even if they were built at the same factory on the same day in the same assembly line right next to each other, your oven is going to be different than my oven. So we're going to start at 50 minutes and do the jiggle test. And when I come back, the last thing we're going to do for this evening is when we pull it out, I'll bring you back when we go to pull it out and we'll show you the jiggle. Okay, we'll see you here in another millisecond. Guys, well here we are. Um, just pulled it out of the oven. It took 65 minutes, so it took a little longer. Um, new to cooking custards into this in this particular oven. So if you notice, uh, how, hey, can you jiggle that a little bit? See how it's jiggling a little bit, but it's still, it's firm. It's not liquid anymore. That's about what you're looking for. So now all we have to do, here's the hard part, is we have to wait and let it cool down to room temperature, which could take a, an hour you know, or more, and then we're going to put it in the fridge overnight, you know, or 12 to 14 hours. So if you make this in the morning, it'd be ready by dinner time. You want to loosen the edges of the spatula before you put it in the refrigerator? Yeah. I, I, did you hear? You want to loosen the edges with the spatula before you put it in the fridge. All right. So we're going to let this cool, throw it in the fridge. And when we come back, it'll be uh, Friday. And we will uh, get her out of the pan and uh, give her a taste. All right, see you in the morning. Have a great night. Okay, it's the next day, it's Friday, and we let our custard, our flan sit all overnight. So when I pulled it out of the fridge, which was just a minute ago, oh. I went ahead and put it into uh, a uh, pan of warm water. Let me show you here, one second. And this was based on a recommendation from uh, somebody that commented on her channel. And by putting it in the warm water, what it does is loosen all this up and, um, well, it, it warms it up just enough that it helps the custard to get loose and the bottom to, to help get it loose. So we've had that sitting in there now. I've had it sitting in there for about a minute or two. So we'll go ahead and take it out. Now you don't want boiling hot water. You don't want to make your, you know, everything kind of crazy. So we just get rid of the, get the pan out of the water. Chris is here, by the way. She's just working, um, so she can't finish it up for you. So I got chosen to do this. The next thing we need to do is just take a, a fork. I'm using a, or a knife. I can use an offset spatula, and we're just going to go around the edges, you know, just to make sure everything is really broke. And so far, we're looks like we're in good shape. You don't want it really sticking to the edges. And then hopefully this pan is big enough. I didn't try beforehand. Uh, there we go. Stick the pan over the top of it. Flip it over. Tap it a couple times. Yep, and there we go. There is our flan. Now, you notice that the syrup that was hard is not hard anymore. Why? I don't know. I don't know the science behind it. I just know it works. <clears throat> so, I mean, you can see there's still a little bit crystallized stuck on the bottom there, which we can take that and try it. And oh my gosh, that's amazing. It tastes like, uh, it tastes better than maple syrup but it has that kind of same consistency, as a matter of fact. And we'll get the rest of that out of there. Okay. All right, we got that. Now, I'm gonna pause for one second so that way we can get some pictures of it. When I come back here in a millisecond, uh, we will uh, cut it, taste it, and see what it looks like. 
All right, Chris got the next necessary pictures to put on Facebook and Instagram for us. And so it's time to cut this bad boy and see how we did. Go ahead. I'm just going to go ahead and cut it all into pieces now and then we'll take a piece. I think that would be the best option. So we're going to cut this into eight decent sized but equal pieces. Just like you pretty much would any pie. Ooh, I can already tell you where it slid back right there. This is one good looking custard. this piece out right here because it looks amazing. There's that. Set that there. And there is our flan, ladies and gentlemen. In all its glory. So it's got that nice, I mean, no air bubbles because we, we filtered it twice. <laughs> well, we ran through the strainer twice. And that'll, uh, That'll help eliminate air bubbles. Not that air bubbles are bad, but it does make a custard creamier if you don't have uh, the air bubbles in it. Why? Once again, don't know the science behind it. I just know it works. Um, I am not a pastry chef. I am not a baker. I am not a cook. I'm just a guy who likes to cook and bake things. So let's uh, give it a taste here and see what it tastes like. That is awesome just awesome if you like like a lemon meringue or a banana cream you know any kind of custard this custard is awesome and it, it's so smooth so silky so rich uh, I, I'm gonna quit trying to describe it because there's really not words for it that's how good it is that that sugary syrup on top of it that we made is great now it, it has a nice kind of i'm gonna say smoky flavor not burnt to it i would almost put this on pancakes that's how good it is uh, any darker than that though i don't know if i would care for it personally just because it i think it would be a little too strong of a flavor but it's got a nice sweetness to it and a nice creaminess to it all right so try it out Tell me what you think, because I think it's fantastic. Um, I think your family will think it's fantastic, too. It's not hard to make. just takes a little time waiting on it. That's all. It's like six ingredients, and bam, you've got an amazing uh, custard that I'm getting there. <laughs> My brain's just not functioning lately. An amazing custard that you could take to any party. You know, if you're having a summer picnic you know, or a picnic out in your backyard, this would be a good a good dessert for it, hands down. All right, well, I'm gonna go enjoy my piece of pie. Uh, leave me a comment, let me know what you think, uh, or find me on Facebook under Brian's Aquatics or Instagram under the same. Let me know what you think. I'm getting ready to post pictures of this on both. Uh, if you try it, if you don't, uh, let me know if you've had it before. If you try it and you don't like it, let me know. Um, tell me what you didn't like about it. You know, if you have a tip or a trick to it, let me know. You know, I like to learn new things all the time. So, that being said, I'm going to go eat this now. I love you very much. Tell somebody else that you love them very much. It'll make their day a whole lot better. All right, I'll talk to you later. Have a great afternoon. Bye.